Yeah, baby. Yeah. Mac is back. Back with another video. Hello, the initiated. My name is Marcus Yunikla, and today we're checking out Pacific Brass by Performance Samples. So it's a brass library. Uh, this has been out, I, I believe, since last month um quite a few days now uh initially i asked if they wanted me to make a demo of this and it doesn't seem like they currently do these kind of uh video youtube demos at all so um first of all i was really busy with a bunch of different work but then i needed to you know research this and see if i wanted to uh buy it myself which i in fact did um and i still know strikingly little about it when you're on the page there isn't a, a whole lot of information or examples of this on the site so i'm actually hoping that this video helps you decide whether you want to buy this or not uh so based on that information why did i buy it if there isn't sufficient you know material on the site to help you in your purchase decision well the loyalty discount is rather considerable very considerable and the difference from that to the full price is really really biggie so um uh, i figured it will actually be at least <laughs> at the very least worth that price uh but knowing performance samples uh, it's probably more than that now in terms of what this is let's go to the website again sorry for the very small screen for you you probably can't see anything <laughs> with this tiny text on this big ass screen but yes i have a very wide screen thingy i can adjust the windows to make it better for you in the future which i will but uh not today so again it's a brass library so this is a part of the pacific lineup of instruments so they've already released ensemble strings and solo strings and I believe Brass is now the most recent release of that. And they call it a classical symphonic orchestra. So that's kind of the sound they're going for. So it, again, does have its very specific sound. And uh, I, I believe also woodwinds and percussion are going to be released at some point. But um, uh, that's pretty much the general uh, gist of it. So they, yeah, they call this the forthcoming symphonic brass library. Let me actually check one thing yeah good to go uh yeah again this text isn't uh, updated so <laughs> the, the website needs a bit bit of work but i i know uh, uh jasper seems to be busy doing you know actual work <laughs> a bunch of sampling etc but you know it would be good to update this because people are obviously researching uh so two horns two tenor tenor uh, trombones two bass trombones two tubas two trumpets try saying that fast and a solo contrabass bass why do i always do that yes it's a fish trombone um the library was created as an addendum to pacific ensemble strings and thus recorded in the same space and the rest of this specific <laughs> pacific lineup while wow, my pronunciation or articulation or speech skills are very troubled today um so yeah this is the space they've done a lot of stuff in uh personally i haven't been a huge fan of the sound of the space but that's a bit that that changed a bit last time when i checked out um the solo strings because the space sounded better so i i'm su uh, suspicious of the fact that it's not the space i don't like but it's rather something to do with the recording process because to me that there has been just too much of the sound of the space they are very uh, reverberant and and resonant with that reverberation of that space that's been a bit too much to my taste before and and it's very difficult to take it out even if you go with the close mics so i usually go with the close mics and then try and get remove a, a lot of that reverberation 
But again, whether that's good or not depends on the sound you're after and what, what works for you and what you're after. Uh, again, this is going for that kind of more classical sound. So there you go. But for me, it has been very strong in that re reverberation. And it also sounds like there is something like compression chewing down on the reverberation. So it gets kind of very thick sounding as well. So that, that's been my main... Um, main sort of uh let me check my there's been i've had some issues with my sound level recording here so it's my mic pre i think um so yeah that that's been my main sort of incompatibility with many of these libraries uh but like i said in solo strings that stuff is just a lot better in some cases it's like perfectly spot on so i'm thinking it has something to do with the recording techniques rather than the space um <laughs> library is based around the familiar multi-length mercato type patches but taken much further with more speeds of performance sampled releases which trigger based on playing speed which is typical of performance samples which is really good note length from short to long okay while multiple dynamics were recorded for everything external modeling was used built from the recordings mm. for, for the solo contrabass trombone to preserve phase better similarly to some of the articulations of pacific solo strings okay so it gets oddly kind of specific technically but vague enough to not really understand what uh, it's you know i'm sure it, it varies depending on how much you know about this external modeling was also used in some cases on the other instruments yeah i just don't know what they mean by external modeling uh, built from the recordings oh, okay so it's probably like not actually what was there sampled but sort of stitched together from the recordings on the edit table um, as an ad adjunct to help smooth out dynamic crossfades by creating interim dynamics on certain instruments articulations cool um, okay that's an interesting introduction for sure uh, look okay so t let's go in order intro period for this is approximately four months long so this is a huge upside it's very very long so if you don't if you really want something you don't happen to have the money for it odds are that in a third of a year you can probably get it together uh, so that's really awesome i really like that they do it so pricing again 89 bucks special loyalty intro so this is what i got it at um and for that, you need either Pacific Orchestra solo strings or ensemble strings or woodwinds or percussion. Two of the latter ones you can't have right now. As of this date, though, okay, yeah, that's what they said. Okay, so that's the best deal you can get for this. Then loyalty intro, if you have Caspian Angry Brass Pro soloists, ensembles, Oceania 1 or 2, and or Vista. So that's your second best option. Normal intro pricing goes to $239. Uh, if you don't have any of those applicable loyalty thingy majingies and then full price after inter period is going to be 349 dollars so massive difference from the best case scenario to the worst worst well the full scenario um so yeah this this is really what made me uh, pull the trigger because uh odds are like i said that there is sufficient value here for me for that 89 box um but like i said audio examples here and video examples are not not sufficient for me to make a purchase decision so i'm guessing a lot of people are also in that camp there's like a doll cast but that sound sounded to me more like a like a full orchestral thing so it doesn't really demonstrate this uh, on its own really well and then i didn't find the audio examples to again kind of tell me exactly what this sounds like and how it behaves um again we touched on instruments uh so two horns two trumpets two trombones 
tenor trombones to bass trombones to tubas and solo contrabass trombone um, articulations multi-length patches up to four recorded dynamics allowing playing from rr okay round robin repetition source tongue staccatos to shorter marcados to sustains based on note length so this is like a very this is i would like to see like a very specific list of this articulation and you know the details this seems kind of like a more like a dump here flutter sustains uh up to five recorded dynamics not available on tubas um has close and a b mics same hall 48 kilohertz 24 bit ncw compressed 8.75 gigs in total so not a massive footprint but not tiny either this is built for contact 6.8 Point zero. Why do I struggle with those so much? My number dyslexia is getting worse and worse. And above. So you need the full retail version of Contact and run that version 6.8.0 or above. And download via Continuata. Uh, this time I had a good experience with Continuata. Continuata. I don't know what language that's even trying to be, but uh, uh, worked uh, without a hitch. Is that the saying? Um, but not the best downloader in my experience. I've had a lot of trouble with that before. Uh, sometimes goes perfectly without any issues, but sometimes not. So that's that's uh, there is an alternative download method as well, but apparently that's even more uh, tedious. So <laughs> good luck with that. Um, and yeah, you got some uh, guest demonstration stuff. This is really cool, but again, it's audio coming from the whatever they recorded through f through the speakers from the speakers so anyway you get it from the phone or the camera and i also believe those are a bit dated as well if i'm not mistaken um cool they have a patch list here so they do offer this why it's not in the description like this i don't i don't know but good that it's here so you get sustains, flutter, sustains, more sustains, flutter, sustains. Okay, so those two combos. Then they go through the library limitations. Again, in typical performance samples style. I actually like this a lot to just, you know, say things as how they are and manage expectations. And this is, you know, pretty, well, not super technical stuff in terms of the depth of it, but it's pretty much, I don't think any other library developer or instrument developer talks about this kind of stuff so i actually really like it that they say hey there are going to be these kind of uh, uh kind of things to consider um usually those are you know lag you know uh, <laughs> so that's one thing uh in in performance sample libraries but the stuff they discuss here limited articulations no legato or, or mutes that's pretty big so i'm sure that's going to influence your decision making musician placement the musicians were a bit too close to the main ab pair which can lead to them sounding a bit up front horns are better in this respect okay i respect the honesty here kind of uh obviously wish that was fixed and realized in the recording but hey stuff happens uh, i'm sure they had plenty of things to think about looping the loops in the lower registers on especially in the higher dynamics and on the solo brass in particular can be a bit rough sustaining for an ext extended period isn't easy so i use smaller bits and graft them together which can sometimes sound uneven despite best efforts okay so again appreciate the honesty uh, this is <laughs> kind of seeming like there's a bunch of things uh, going on. It will be interesting to see how this stuff relates to the full price of this, which is not cheap, uh, considering we got the you know the the you know the articulation offering here and etc. Because for that price, you can get some pretty solid and comprehensive brass as well, but. We'll see. Horn flutter tongue, tonguing, tonguing. 
that's how you pronounce it. For some reason, there are on the softer side compared. They are. These are. Jeez, I'm sorry for my reading. Compared to the other sections, could be directionally playing a part as well. Pre-note ambience. Even after refining, there's a bit of pre-note ambience in the attacks. If you want to edit it further, try this. Okay, and then they give instructions to that, which I'm definitely not going to do today, but really cool that it's there. No overlap. If you overlap MIDI notes, you may get a release volume spike. Okay. And... <laughs> they, they say no second violins, which, to be honest, when I'm buying a brass library, I'm I'm uh, that's something I would expect. But it's really cool they manage expectations here as well. Uh, that's obviously like a copy paste uh, issue from probably solo strings or something. But uh, that's funny, funny for sure. All right, I think that's the page, and then you have instructions for finding your loyalty code in your email, which you really want to do, otherwise you can't get the lowest offer for this. So let us go back to uh, to the contact view. I can close Chrome here. And um, cool. Touching on the interface here, as you can see in traditional performance sample fashion, very bare bones, nothing extra, just the the, the vanilla white color and a bunch of mic positions um, and that's it uh, no no money and effort wasted on that uh, so the library structure here is when you open the side panel I try and refuse to call it a side pane uh, this is what you get so th this is all of the instruments here opened up I've got brass bass, trombones, flutter sustains here. So we're just going to, you know, go in that order. In terms of what you'll be hearing today, it is only Pacific Brass in action. I don't add anything on top. No EQ, no reverb, no compression, nothing. I only have a limiter on my master bus to make the level decent for this video. So it's actually listenable and somewhat consistent and competitive but it's set to be as transparent as possible uh, if you hear any distortion it's probably the limiter crapping out and i will adjust if it's not i'll definitely let you know and i'll probably let you know either way so if you see me adjusting stuff that's not happening on the screen that's the limiter and i'll probably touch on it either way is there anything else to say here i don't think so I'll, I'll, I want to, yeah, reload that because the blue zone disappeared for me for some reason. And yes, this is actually a very blind demo. I mean, I've heard the stuff on the website, but that's not much to speak of. So this is my authentic, uh, honest, <laughs> blind response to this. So let's get going. I might have to adjust the level here, but let's play. I will bring the level down just a bit. Okay, I will bring down the limiter a bit more. <laughs> so definitely quite a raspy sound at the top end, and that's not a negative thing. Uh, we're gonna have to try and find a decent level here so that we don't distort the limiter there. So, okay, super dynamic. I'm gonna have to pull the gain on the limiter all the way down here because otherwise that that that's uh, <laughs> it gets super loud. I'm very impressed by the dynamic range there. I also wanna find a good level where I can actually assess the 
because it get obviously that brass can get super distorted and like harsh naturally um so uh, i really want to assess whether it's <laughs> a good amount or not So, yeah, let me play that again. So that gets super aggressive. It's the, like the last, even the third of the dynamic range here. It, it gets so much louder and so much bitier and, and aggressive. Let's play a bit, a bit lower. So yeah, very aggressive, bitey edge to this. It, it does definitely, definitely get harsh on the ear. So we definitely need to treat that somehow it's kind of like a bit i'm a bit um what's the word uh split that's not the word conflicted here because i i do enjoy the bite and the aggressiveness i'm not sure if it gets a bit too much at the top Like it's there where the bite and the distortion, the natural distortion of the brass begins to be super uh, aggressive. So I would, depending on how you blend this, you could sort of add, blend this with another brass library sort of underneath and quite quiet. And then that bite could give you the perfect amount of edge for your brass. But on its own, like this is, this at this point, and we're hovering around like a hundred, just under a hundred, uh, MIDI ve velocity, it's it's getting really harsh on the ear. So that's going to be very tough to mix. I would probably, and also it's a bit of a tricky thing because it sounds like it's a mix mixture of. Not only the spectral balance of the you know the, the EQ, but it, it's like a transient pop. So on one hand, I really like here uh, the how it's popping and it becomes r super uh, visceral. But it, and again, pushing beyond this 100 velocity point, it just goes, goes, goes like super, super aggressive. So I would probably like if you use that very momentarily and I realize I'm not being like super generous in terms of the stuff that I'm playing so that it makes musical sense. So fair enough, very fair point. So I would very momentarily use that. Obviously, you know, if we were doing like a build up like this, I would be at the top end very momentarily. But the dynamic range here is crazy. I mean, first of all, just going from here to like to that 90 uh, velocity point, loving it super, <laughs> super, super uh, uh, rich dynamic range, texturally very, very nice. I like everything going on here. So you, I, you could just use it in that range and do your stuff. So you could think of this like as an extra push. Does it make working with it, uh, with the mod wheel a bit more difficult? Yeah, maybe it depends on how you set it up, but that's very good but it, it, it's like <laughs> it's crazy because when i when we start out here at the bottom like we are let me check getting getting some peaks at like minus 33 decibels full scale and then we 
go all the way up. And that was about minus three full scale peaks. So big, big dynamic range. So yeah, I mean, you, you, this would be one of those libraries that's that's very difficult to work it, it, at a fixed point volume. So I would have to write per section and adjust the volume for each section. So no biggie deal. I don't know if that that's not a good way of putting it, but uh, something to consider. Like won't be like a super straightforward experience, at least for me, how how I write. Yeah, that, that that's but yeah in general i would say that that top end that kind of very spitty harsh distorted edge gets a bit excessive uh i for me probably the best use case for that would be like that kind of a momentary thing that i would build up to it or doing something sort of way more exceptional But yeah, let's uh, play kind of different sort of stuff here. The short note stuff here is super stellar. And again, here I'm we're at max dynamics. And I'm probably, probably with short note stuff peaking at minus 15 dB. So <laughs> quite a big range here. You don't want to accidentally play long notes if you're doing short notes here okay yeah that's much louder which makes sense here because you're playing lower so they can't really produce the same volume there But yeah, I mean, everything sort of texturally I'm loving here. I mean, barring some of the very top ed edge bite. Uh, but yeah, and, and also playability wise, like these shorts work really nicely. Again, as you can hear, very rich in the in the uh, microphone position. Wait, did we? Why did it? By default, it's only A B mics on. What? So I'm a bit confused here because they have like buttons for apparently turning it on. Yeah, so everything is off. Okay, we were listening only to the A B mics which seems to be the default setting. So since I do like myself a bit drier, let's do the close mics. Ooh. That's very different, very different. But as you can hear, the kind of the wash, the blow to the back with the reverb is still very prominent. It sounds good. I like it. It's a, like a luscious, natural decay. So, yeah, in, in certain places that I'm sure that reverberation would sit perfectly and here's the thing like to me again this feels a, a lot more refined and controlled and i it's it's a, it's a lot of <laughs> sound coming from that space but this doesn't have like the compressed compressed blocky sound that some of the previous releases do have 
uh, to my taste. So I really like it. It's it sounds natural, sounds good. But there might be some situations where that even that amount is a bit too much, and then you need to find ways to work around it. But I'm sure in many cases, even for me, that's going to be just great. I really like the the fact that it's in a very positive way like raw the pitch is slightly you know it, it's allowed to flow it, this this feels very very organic dare I say to me in a in a very very good way arrangement for this instrument but yeah uh, what I, I you really do get like two very distinctively different sounds with this because the AB mics give you like this big uh, orchestral sound and, and image and the close mics give you a, a much sort of g grittier focused uh, thing. Let me try and combo those. Without the close mics. All right. Yeah, it just gives you that uh, additional uh, presence there. That's uh, this is probably one of the best miking uh, combo balances that I've heard in a performance samples uh, release before. It, I mean, and again, in, in uh, solo strings, that was, you know, very different already. But this, they, they, they're distinctively different, but they pair super nicely together. So uh, let's move on before I just, I could play that for hours. Uh, that's very, very pleasant to play. Um, so yeah and, and and again the sound is is in a in a lovely way very uh natural and organic and raw so this one is what is this bass trombones sustains so we were viewing flutter sustains before So again, that would explain why the edge was a lot harsher in those previous ones. Um, really got to be careful with the transition and smooth with the transition going from like the top third dynamic to the second third because it can sound very abrupt but if you go slow enough it's going to be smooth
Yeah, again, the top end, it's a bit excessive, harsh to me, kind of becomes, I don't want to say redundant. In uh, Let's say in some cases that would be the case. But again, if you go there, you want to be very careful how you how much of that you distribute into the sound of it. Uh, but yeah, again, super, super solid. Otherwise, let's try the close mics. Yeah, there's a distinct lack of low end there, but that, I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know what mics th they use there. I'm, I'm, uh, that's not necessarily an issue. It's just a, an observation, but uh, together. And again, there, the how you how long you spend and how you transition into those top uh, velocities really dictates how how it begins to how harsh it gets. So you really want to be super careful with your uh, you know velocity uh, writing or writing, should I say, in uh, with this one makes makes a huge difference. Because there, for example, the harshness doesn't get excessive. It's a bit easier anyway in the lower end. And again, there, perfectly fine, perfectly perfect, I would even say. Just you, you've got to be super careful how much time you spend in the top. <laughs> <laughs> but it does give you that like last bit of like power uh, so extremely dynamic really really well done in that regard and uh but yeah pay attention to that uh that uh mod wheel or whatever you use to write your velocities um, so two horns flutter sustains Actually, we didn't play any short note stuff on this one. Okay, that's really, really good. Let's bring some close mics in there. I really like how it kind of begins to break up at the top. from my part but yeah these just super solid all right so two horns flutter sustains sounding really good big volume difference here obviously de dealing with a different instrument let's bring this up a bit So 
sort of a bit darker and rounder in the tone. Again, different instrument, but still a bit of a tonal thing. And again, that's not bad. I actually like that quite a bit. Oh, those no beginning triggers are so nice. These sound fantastic. A few things, again, I'm noticing that you need to be super smooth with your velocity transitions. If you're not, you're going to hear some of those uh, ch uh, transitions between the dynamic ranges. So you've got to be super smooth or at least make it smooth in the MIDI editor. I'm loving the texture of these. These are super rich, again, organic, raw, kind of like living. Uh, very, very... <laughs> Very nice and again has a has a kind of a nice roundness in the top end kind of even like a, a bit of a vintage vintage tone there uh, so i'm really digging these ones And again here, the top end just beautifully blooms and distorts. Like, when I say distortion, the natural distortion of the instrument really nice. I I'm loving the organic pitchiness of it. So it flows. Those note beginning triggers are fantastic. This is just pretty much just like perfect for, <laughs> for what it is. So really, really, really good job. Okay, so that gets a lot louder than the rest of it. So in terms of the volume dynamic consistency here, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously the instrument gets louder in different ranges, but how that's kind of evened out for for us, that that's a different story. Let me play a bit more of this. Yeah, that gets a lot louder, a lot more resonant. I'm going to pull back the level all the way so we can actually push this dynamic. All right, so it looks like we can do about 6 dB there. Yeah, beautiful texture. Again, there you could hear, like, you need to be super smooth to make the dynamic transition sound smooth. So it, it is, it doesn't forgive a lot in that regard. So it seems like this one doesn't have the shorts. Not sure. What did it say on the website? I'm not going to go back there. It says something that one doesn't have the shorts. 
I, or something. Because it kind of it, it sounds like it does up until maybe two thirds of the dynamic range, but that top end of the velocity doesn't sound like a short anymore. So no, not sure about that. But uh, in the lower velocity in that range, it still actually <laughs> remains playable even if they're not shorts there. Okay, so now we're looking at uh, horns, two horn sustains, All right? <laughs> Good. Trying to bring the level up for you guys. Puffy, distant, nice bit of kind of natural um, saturation there. Let's try to play a bit longer stuff. So get a get a level idea going here first. Uh, too loud. Yeah, yeah, super solid in that regard as well. Two tenor trombones. Hmm. Really interested in hearing the trumpets. Sorry about that. The, the, this, in terms of like level consistency between everything here. <laughs> Seems like a very organic approach, so yeah, you're gonna have to, you know, gain stage or, or level your stuff quite, quite well. Yeah, I don't I don't know if that's that sounds to me like that's not intended to short. And again, we'll go to the It's really hard for me to demonstrate everything here, but going to the close mics. I'll go there if you know, if I <laughs> feel like it, if it sounds like I want to go there. 
Um, let's do the two tenor trombones, normal sustains. Uh, did it activate? It doesn't. Nope. Did not. Did not fucking activate. Again, super dynamic, not much to be surprised by there. Yeah, it doesn't, that's the, that's, this is the, I gotta go back to the website. I have to, because that obviously doesn't have shorts and obviously these are said to be sustains. Uh, but, So is it just like a happy coincidence? Let me try and check. Multi-length patches. Okay, yeah. So round robin repetition sourced tongue staccatos, or two shorter marcatos, two sustains based on note length. So this is kind of like, I don't know what I would call those patches instead of sustains. So they kind of, kind of they go up to a sustain. Uh, so, but they can do less. Some of them. Uh, okay, so flutter sustains not available on tubas, but to me it doesn't sound like these ones really. Because they're not, they have like that bit of initial transient kind of doubling, kind of a weird. So that, that to me would not be like a passable short sound in the middle of the mix at the lower velocities, yeah. That's when the edge begin, begins to bleed in. So the lower velocities, yeah, I would I could use these as shorts, but beyond about halfway velocity, no. Well, actually, that that works quite well. Actually, that works well. It seems to be super sensitive to the to the note size, which is. I don't know. This doesn't seem very consistent to me. I was playing the same thing. Let me play a bit more. I can hear like that there's another sample thing tr trying to kind of come through, push through from there. You have to be super fast not to get any of it. And by the way, this is the first one where I've heard that difference in the shorts. Um, yeah, let's move on to uh, trumpets here. So these are the flutter sustains. So here's where the sound is distinctly more 
spacious, so I'm going to bring in the close mics. I really appreciate how that makes a very clear difference. So they're getting better at these miking positions and especially in combining them together. Yeah, I mean that sounds more like a like a <laughs> really bad synth from some something. Mm. Like a flutter short isn't exactly a reasonable ask. Okay, these are really nice. So these are the normal sustains. Again, maybe a tad bit harsh on the top, but that's nothing uh, like EQ can't do. Really liking like when you when you nail the velocity smoothness, it beautifully you know blows into that that space. It's a very nice sound. Push the gain here again so you can he actually hear something, hopefully a bit better. Yeah, again, I gotta, gotta pull back that a bit to make this consistent. Bit of limiter distortion there. It, it is so dynamic. Uh, I mean, going again from barely hitting like minus thirty full scale, and I I gotta pull that even back if I want to max out this dynamic. That was like a dB away from clipping. So truly very rich dynamic range. And again, how you use it again here, it was for me most like the harshness was clearly in the bass trombones, a lot more aggressive. Hasn't been so bad in the trombones, a bit more like that. I can understand it from the instrument perspective here, but here, no, no issues. Uh, and again, the like the top third dynamic range thing it's really how you use it here now that i understand the mod wheel behavior here or the velocity behavior it's like if you go there momentarily i understand that where the like the classical influence comes in here because it's really gives you the option for that like that extreme top um, but yeah and let's play some short stuff I really love these low velocity shorts. They they're just so pleasantly round and warm and fluffy and puffy. Really really good. And they pair with that space really nicely.
and in typical performance samples fashion. Super playable. Let's try like a medium velocity here. And again, we're dealing with the uh, AB mics here alone. Let me bring in the close mics. Ooh. That's nice. Um, go back to the AV mics. I'll try this very loud. Yeah, very loud. It's just crazy, the range here. I'm gonna have to pull the limiter all the way off. <laughs> That, that is very nice. I mean, it's just so playable. Yeah, but when it goes, if you go from shorts to those sustains, you've got to be really careful with the dynamics, like super precise. So, yeah, very cool stuff going into the... So these are the tuba sustains. Again, seems like the <laughs> again the dynamic range here is crazy. It yeah, seems like the shorts here again. Let's let's play a bit more a, a bit more so we get an idea of this. Gonna have to okay. This is the lowest velocity. I'm boosting this like heck so you can actually hear something. Cool. Again, obviously a very challenging range for the instrument, but... So yeah, the shorts are there. <laughs> you just gotta be super fast. You can't spend any extra time there. It's very precise. So you probably wanna adjust that on your own, depending on your keyboard. Obviously, each is gonna be different in the response, but... So yeah, but very cool, very nice, indeed. Okay, solo contrabass, that's the official, official pronunciation, flutter sustains. So, in, ooh, what did I do? What did I do? Oh no, there we go. Um, yeah, solo inclusion, interesting, maybe that 
probably says that there's not going to be a solo version of the Pacific Brass, but you know, cool inclusion. So obviously, as they say, no legato here. That sounds a bit like a car. So yeah, this one doesn't have the shorts, I think. Although if you play at the lower velocity, yeah, so you hear different artifacts. I don't think it's supposed to be played that way. You get some whooshing sounds here in the upper register, but beyond that, that's actually very usable in that regard even. That's about the amount of boosting I can do. There the top edge seems a lot more nicer to me. It definitely, you know, gets kind of distorted and and again by distortion I'm re I'm referring to the instrument's natural distortion, but that's a very nice kind of bubblier spikier edge. Yeah, that's a really nice texture. I, I enjoy that. So with close mics, oh, you get it sounds like uh, one of those <laughs> like uh, spitting cars. Like you know when when it, when the exhaust gets really riley. So this is the close mic only. Interesting, you could hear some filtering going on there on the... Interesting. Really liking these close mics. They're kind of really warm, close-up, sort of... Again, the word vintage comes to mind, but super nice. Very, very cool. And this is the sustains non non-flutter. Beautiful bit of bite and distortion there at the edge, like from the actual instrument. Really nice. I know they said no legatos and this is a sustain patch, but that's really good for non legato with a bit of work and careful attention that that can be super nice. Obviously there you can hear some of the same the the initial portion of the uh, sample being a bit repetitive but again if you play very close attention to your velocity you can kind of finicky your your way at, uh, around that or work your way around that especially there that's like really nice So yeah, I mean the the kind of the top third, maybe a bit less. I would really just reserve for those maximum, you know, <laughs> crescendos or whatever kind of a top end peak you want to build. But otherwise, it can be a bit excessive.
really wish it had that end range. But hey, these these shorts. Really good. Very nice, very nice. I think that's all. Yes, indeed, we went through all of this. So, well, let's just get uh, summarizing. I'm gonna open the side panel here once again. Let's, uh, let's make this a lot smaller here. So we can, we can keep this up and I can, uh, this remains somewhat more watchable, I guess. Not that my face really contribute, contributes uh, very positively to this experience, I'm sure. But uh, so, I mean, again, just touching on playability, uh, just fantastic stuff. At times it gets very specific. So you might, for the shortest note possible, actually be super short and fast. But again, that depends on the keyboard you use. Uh, but overall playability is just fantastic. Uh, first of all, tremendous dynamic range, pr like very much at the uh, extreme end of that. And usually when I say that it's a negative, but here it's it's really done really, really well. Uh, sometimes the upper third, if a library goes really hard at the top end, it kind of becomes redundant because you only get you don't get a textural change you, you just get like more volume and more harshness but not here uh it, it is very sensitive to the use case but if you know how to write music then <laughs> and you know what you're doing in terms of the part writing and the arrangement then i think about maybe a bit less than the top third in uh especially the trombones uh that's kind of like a a thing that you momentarily want to go to into uh, on the horns on the trumpets perfectly fine and very maps very nicely and immediately to me but yeah when you go but in general if you go to that like top third dynamic you want to be very conscious of the timing of it and how fast you go in there in terms of going through the different velocity layers you've got to be super smooth with the behavior if there's any abruptive motion or non-smooth motion you're going to hear some transitions but just get smooth with it or do it in the midi editor you smoother them out uh, you know be conscious of of that um texturally absolutely fantastic very beautiful organic fluctuating raw like pitch wise at this bit of like motion there so it sounds very alive i love the textures especially on the horns fantastic uh yeah just kind of breath taking stuff there um but yeah just texturally super rich and and nice um in terms of the the uh sound of the space which has been a kind of a gripe of mine or or an issue or sticking point before again in in uh pacific solo strings that was already a lot better and obviously you had a lot more control over it as well but here it's this kind of same thing. It's, it's just really well done. It's a very nice sounding space. Um, again, I'm hearing none of the issues I've had before of the space where it gets not just very reverberant, but it gets very blocky. To me, it sounds like there's a compressor chewing down on the space and making it kind of a very blocky reverberant sound. So not only is there too much, has there been too much reverb before it kind of gets very compressed sounding and sort of blocky to me uh, none of that issue here it's a beautiful naturally decaying kind of a thing uh, on the trombones especially is when i noticed 
maybe that the, the amount of reverb is a bit too much but once you you know and to be clear that was the only instrument where i consciously noticed myself thinking about that i didn't think about it after the horns at all so that's a great so a sign and you know if i piece this together correctly it seems like they're getting a better grasp on either the recording process in this space for these instruments or the processing uh, either you know uh, real-time processing going into the box or or whatever post-production they do it's uh, getting better uh, but yeah i mean in pretty much everything be uh, beyond the bass trombones i didn't notice that issue at all uh, and again uh, with the ab mics you get this kind of a bigger orchestral uh, beautiful sound kind of a more a symphonic dare i say heresy but uh yeah bigger bigger sound and with the close mics i really like the close mics they're super focused and punchy they have this kind of vintage top end thing very pleasantly warm and round and they they really bring that that punch to to these instruments and uh doesn't take a lot to get a good balance going which i really love uh, obviously i don't want to spend any more time <laughs> engineering than i have to because it's very time consuming and you know you get to get to write music more and focus on the things you want to focus on so beautifully done there the mics are matching better than i've ever seen any performance samples release match uh so that's a great si uh, sign as well um anything else i want to touch on thinking about the the pricing uh again well, i guess we could i could take you here with me not that you can see anything <laughs> from this uh this website anyway on my my big screen but um uh, so i want to go through like price per price that's not what i wanted to say price at a time yeah was this worth it so i paid 89 bucks of my own money uh and 89 bucks definitely worth it uh very very happy with this investment uh i already have great brass libraries um that that definitely changed with the release of uh uh strezov sampling flatus brass which i love and is probably my number it's definitely my number one brass library so far uh, with this uh, i think that's still the case but like i think this supplementing stress of a flat is brass is going to be a pretty insane killer combo um but yeah 89 bucks definitely worth it um <laughs> uh loyalty intro, intro price normal 149 bucks yeah definitely worth it <laughs> uh the normal intro price is where things get uh um 239 i'd say still like everything that's in here is just uh fantastic it is it is a great great library the main sticking point i for sure can see here is the lack of legatos so if you're looking for you know one brass library to to rule them all this can't be that uh because of the lack of the legatos so you're gonna have to you know find something that um uh, does the legatos for you and pairs with this then that becomes like a conversation uh i'd still say this is very much and, and again you have to remember that this like any library has its own sound so you need to like the sound you need to like this kind of a bigger wider sound the close mics kind of tweak it but i see the close mics here being like a it's a tuning factor it's like a customization type of a factor in here uh, it's not like giving it gives you a, a distinctively different unique sound uh, would they i mean they would definitely work on their on their own as well but it gives you a very specific sound so first of all that that's what you have to figure out does it sound like your kind of brass library does it give you that kind of sound that you want to write with that's obviously in the the main one of the main points uh, 
uh, points of contention <laughs> or main topics to discuss with any library. Um, assuming you like it, still normal intro price, 239 bucks for the sustains and for the shorts. I mean, the shorts are just so good. They play nicely. Again, the, all the, the, the textual richness, the velocity, the dynamic range you get, uh, and the sustain, the beauty of the sustains as well. It honestly is definitely uh, worth $239 as well. Going to full price, $349, that begins to really be... Uh, I'd be still happy to, assuming I had the money, <laughs> uh, pay the $239 uh, for good sustain, super dynamic, texturally very nice, assuming I like the sound, and the, the shorts that I can also play. That's still, I'd say, reasonable. $349. In that price range, a lot of other stuff also comes into the conversation. And again, not making comments about whether this can, you know, <laughs> hold its own against those because it can in those certain fronts. But it's the conversation of the 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 lack of the legatos, and and yeah, again, obviously, it does have its uh, its own sound, so that needs to fit you as well. And obviously, no mutes, so there's that. But that, that's sort of kind of like where I see this being price-wise. And obviously it does have the library limitations that they do touch on, which are kind of like when I read this first, I was a bit like getting the impression of like, is this this kind of like a, you know, B-sides type of a thing of an album? Because uh, it, it, it feels like there's a, First of all, I pre I so much appreciate the honesty of going through all of these things here, because again, I don't think any other company, any other developer, does these this kind of a thing on their site. So super commendable. I love the the expectation management. I love the honesty. I love the transparency. Um, but yeah, some of these things were a bit like, okay, uh, are they? And to be clear, these are things that will and do appear in many other <laughs> uh, releases by other companies. So it's like uh, you, you just have to appreciate the honesty here and the transparency because a lot of companies have these exact same issues or more or worse and they don't talk about them. So, um, so uh, but yeah, I, I got the impression like, okay, it, stuff is missing, uh, but yeah, especially with the looping, I was like, ooh, that, that doesn't sound good. But if you actually move with the dynamics, as you, in my estimation and experience, move at least a bit all the time, even if you're sustaining a same dynamic, a bit of motion there, either with just like mixing volume or, or velocity uh, control. Uh, if you do hold some uh, a note at the same velocity, you will obviously with this one um, hear the looping points and I, I did hear them but that's not very good writing that's not very good programming there's should be all, always some kind of a, even the tiniest motion in your if assuming you're going for like a realistic organic sound should be that uh, to consider so yeah that didn't turn out to be a big issue at all pretty actually in my case pretty non-existent um didn't see any concerns with the musician placement uh, and i'm not like a, a purist in that sense anyway um so yeah and the other other things not 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 an issue obviously the lack of no second violins here was a shocker with devastating i will never get over that but hey Maybe one day Brass Library shall have the uh, second violins. Uh, so yeah, the legato, I'd say, will be probably the main uh, sticking point uh, when we go into those higher prices. But again, uh, I, in my estimation, even going up to the normal intro price, this is 
very, very competitive, very reasonable. So yeah, uh, I think I'll call it there so I don't ramble any more than I already have. Um, so yeah, really, really good stuff. Very interesting seeing how this will blend and layer with other stuff. And also I do want to put this kind of side by side to what I'm using now, mainly uh, a flatus brass. Um, so yeah, that's, that's about it. Let me know if you have this at home or at your studio, what you think, and certainly do let me know what you think of this video. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Finished.